What's up my friends, welcome back to the channel. On today's video we're doing a double shoe review because Ultra has just expanded their experience line. So today we're going to be talking about the Ultra Experience Flow and the Ultra Experience Form. Let's get into it. Before we get started I do just want to say that this video is in partnership with my friends over at Roadrunner Sports. Roadrunner Sports was good enough to send me both the Experience Flow and the Experience Form. However they haven't told me what to say, they don't have any editorial privileges and all the thoughts and opinions are my own. With that said, you can buy both of these shoes at Roadrunner Sports. You can buy the Experience Flow for $140 and the Experience experience form for $145. Okay, so just briefly about the Ultra Experience line. The Experience line is Ultra's first drop with drop. So you know that up until last year when they released the Forward Experience, Ultra only made zero drop shoes. Well, that changed with the Forward Experience. Ultra has now expanded the Experience line with the Experience Flow, the Experience Form, and also a trail version, the Experience Wild. So all three shoes in the Experience line have 32 millimeters in the heel, 28 in the forefoot for a four millimeter drop. So this is going to be perfect for you guys that want to introduce some lower drop running shoes into your rotation but you're not quite ready to go all the way to zero drop or if you're already a big ultra fan and you have all their zero drop options you can also expand your repertoire the experience line has everything that you expect from ultra and of course the big thing is something that you don't expect from ultra and that's drop but if you want to broaden your horizons and have something with a four millimeter drop maybe the experience flow or the experience form is for you now i did mention the forward experience that came out last year i happen to have one of those right here and ultimately ultra has rebranded the forward experience and turned it into the experience flow. However, it's a little more than just a rebranding because Ultra has made a few small changes between the forward experience and the experience flow, but we'll talk about those in just a second. Okay, let's get started with the experience flow. The experience flow is a neutral daily trainer. And Ultra claims that in a US men's size 9, the experience flow tips the scale at 8.4 ounces or 238 grams. In my US men's size 13, the weight goes up a little to 10.3 ounces or 293 grams. But in my size, I think anything under the 300 grams is pretty light. I'm sure all you big footed runners out there will agree with me. And coming over to the experience form, this is Ultra's stability version of the experience line. So it's still a daily trainer, but it's gonna offer some stability elements for those runners that may need it. And we'll dig fully into those in just a second. But Ultra claims, in a US men's size nine, the experience form will tip the scale at 9.6 ounces or 272 grams. However, in my size, the US men's size 13, that weight goes up to 11.4 ounces or 323 grams. So there's a little more going on, a little more material in the stability version that's why it's slightly heavier. Now you might be looking at both these shoes on the table and think that these shoes they look so similar and yes they certainly do. I mean we've got the same green midsole gray upper but at least in my colorway the experience form has black laces the experience flow has gray laces so when I'm overlaying running footage you'll be able to tell which shoe is which that way. Also the color of the inside is just a little different the experience form is black the experience flow is gray so that's how I want you to tell them apart. Now there are still a lot of these shoes that are very similar to each other so we're going to talk about the upper and we're going to just start with one and I think we'll start with the experience form. So let me hold this up and this is just the same as the flow but we have a nice padded heel collar. Now I want you to notice on the inside of the heel collar there is an additional bolster. So as well as the normal padding around the heel collar we have an additional bolster which gives a lovely feeling of security right around the back of your heel. Both of these shoes have a great step in feel. The heel counter is moderately rigid. In fact the heel counter right at the back is almost non-existent. Now it's as I said it's moderately rigid here but there is a little bit of reinforcement on the sides and it doesn't come together right at the back. So you can feel a little bit of firmness here, but that is more than enough to ensure that you do have a good heel lockdown. I didn't experience any heel slip in the form or the flow. But let's just switch over to the experience flow for a second, because there was just a little change that I noticed between the forward experience and the experience flow. And I think what I read was that it was just an upper change. And the upper change, even though I didn't notice it at the time when I only had the forward experience, was actually a very welcome change because they made it a lot more breathable, a lot lighter. And as I'm holding up the experience, experience flow, I can actually see light coming through the shoe. So that is great for a daily trainer. You see these lines coming across the upper there. That's where the upper is just slightly thinner and it's going to increase breathability. So the upper is just improved. Let's just leave it there. The upper is improved on the experience flow than it was on the forward experience. But also what I noticed on the back, like this heel collar, whatever material Ultra is using to aid in rigidity here in the heel counter, it's a little more rigid on the experience flow than it is on the forward experience. Now I do have to say that I didn't have any heel slip when I was running in the forward experience and I still didn't have it in the experience flow but I think when we are running in a daily trainer and keeping in mind that not all runners feet are exactly the same that little bit of extra rigidity on the experience flow is going to increase heel lockdown for a lot more runners at least that's how I'm choosing to interpret it anyway let me put these forward experience away the upper is an engineered mesh it seems exactly the same on the experience flow as it does on the experience form there are a few stylistic differences uh, most noticeably if we look on the toe box of the experience form we can see some of those lines going 
in different directions. As far as underlays and overlays go, we have a nice underlay coming around the toe box. That's going to keep that upper off your foot. Oh, and I should say that in both the Experience Flow and the Experience Form, Ultra is using their standard foot shape last. So in case you don't know, Ultra uses three different foot shapes throughout their shoes. We have the original, we have the standard, which is what these are, and we have slim. But this is exactly what you would expect from Ultra. We have a nice roomy toe box. It's just super comfortable to step into and then go running in. Okay, let's come down to the midsole. Ultra is using their lightweight compression molded EVA. And I do like the styling right here, how they've cut the lines into the midsole. It's definitely form over function, but the shoe functions just fine. So I'm happy that it looks so good. Now the first part of the midsole that I want to show you on the experience form is something that contributes to the stability of this shoe. And that's this guide rail right here. And you can see that is missing from the experience flow. So this guide rail right here is just going to provide a little bit of support for you runners that may need it. It's going to help give your foot a little support, stop it from collapsing in on the medial side. And then if we come down to the outsole, we can see Ultra is using the typical outsole rubber pattern where the rubber follows the metatarsals of your foot. And this is something else I want to show you the difference between the two. On the experience flow, we have a big area of exposed midsole foam. And on the experience form, we have this extra rubber right here on the medial side. And again, that's going to work in tandem with this guide rail to just give a little more medial support. Now, there's no posting in this. The stability elements aren't old school. You are not going to feel a sense of control. It's more guidance. And those of you that need it are really going to appreciate these elements. One more thing that I want to point out is the size of the outsole. We can see that the experience form right here is just a little wider in the midfoot than the experience flow. And again, just slightly wider, it's going to create a more stable platform. I have tested both of these shoes extensively and I've also gone out and I have run with the experience flow on one foot and the experience form on the other foot. And I think for me as a shoe reviewer, that's very important to do because if I go out one day in the experience form and the other day in experience flow, it's very difficult to tell them apart. So in my testing, I ran in one and then I ran in the other and I can certainly feel the difference when I did it like that. When I wore one shoe one day after the other, I couldn't make up my mind of what I was feeling different. But when I wore them so close to each other, I was able to pass out the differences and even more so when I had one on each foot. Now, I'm a neutral runner. I don't require stability elements. But with that said, when I was thinking about it as I was running, it almost felt like my heel was lighter in the experience form. And it's very difficult to explain what that actually felt like. So it was almost like my heel wasn't compressing the foam in this area of the shoe on the experience form as much as it was on the experience flow. Does that make sense? I think I'm almost making too much of it because I really had to focus on what I was feeling in order to realize that I was feeling anything. So ultimately, yes, there is a difference between the experience form and the experience flow. And in my size, there is a 30 gram weight increase in the form over the flow, but both are the same daily trainer. The form just caters to runners that need that little bit of extra stability. Oh, you know what I missed was the tongue. So let me show you on the experience form. The tongue is medium in thickness. The tongue is not gusseted, but we do have a lace loop right here in the middle. I didn't experience any tongue migration in either the form or the flow. Oh, there's one thing I really loved about this shoe, and it's really not going to matter to you as someone that's possibly going to buy one of these, but I loved the laces. Now, the laces are quite coarse. There is a little bit of flex in them, as we would expect with a shoelace. But what I notice is because these laces are coarse, they lock through the eyelets very well. So when I'm pulling on the laces and I'm trying to tighten it from the bottom of the eyelet chain all the way to the top, when I pull it and tighten it, it locks in place. There's no letting the laces just slide through, which is very refreshing if you've ever experienced laces that are tough to get tight because they keep sliding back through. So I know these are very minor things, but someone at Ultra has been paying attention to these tiny things. And also these are just stylistic differences. We do have some overlays coming along the eyelet chain. It's a little different here on the experience flow, but it serves exactly the same purpose. So you're probably wondering about the run experience. What does it actually feel like to run? And whether you choose the experience form or the experience flow, I found them to be a very, very similar ride. Well, I found them to be an identical ride if I don't include that little feeling in my heel from that extra support. But this compression molded EVA that Ultra is using is definitely on the firm side. Now I've noticed as I've stacked up the miles, it tends to get a little more forgiving, but it's definitely on the firmer end of the spectrum. So those of you looking for a super plush soft ride may not like the Ultra Experience line right out of the box. With that said, having a slightly firmer foam is very refreshing. So these are both daily trainers. You're going to be using them for the bulk of your miles. And what I find when running in a slightly firmer foam is that it encourages me to pick up the pace a little more. So when I want to do strides at the end of an easy run, if this was the only shoe I had, I wouldn't have an issue doing workouts in these shoes. Of course, it's not going to be ideal. It's not a specific workout shoe, but that firmer midsole compound is going to give you the illusion of road feel, and it's going to make things just seem a little faster. Now, Ultra does say that a comparable shoe to this is the Hoka Clifton 9. I happen to have a pair of the Clifton 9s right here, and I can say that, yes, while they are comparable in the way that they both have a great step-in feel, 
similar upper, the ride is not comparable at all. The Clifton 9 is very plush, very soft. I'd almost want to grab the Clifton 9 as a recovery shoe and then grab the Ultra Experience Flow or Form if I was going to run long or I was going to do any type of speed work. So yes, they are similar in looks and feel until you start running, but the same person that buys the Ultra Experience Flow is probably not going to go for the Clifton 9 just because the rides are just night and day. They're so far apart. Ultra is using their rocker shape technology. We have a nice heel bevel here on the back and of course that is exactly the same here on the experience form and the shoe just turns over nicely. So I think Ultra has done a pretty good job with their experience line. It's good to see that they've expanded it from just a neutral daily trainer into a stability shoe and also the experience wild for the trail runners. Now if you have been panicking like Man, I love Ultra but I want their zero drop shoes. I just want to encourage you they are not going away from that whatsoever. Ultra is just expanding their lineup and I think they've done a pretty good job doing it so far. So with that it's Matt B. This has been my review of the Ultra Experience Flow and the Ultra Experience Form. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days.